Haskins Laboratory, a historical review by Casey Walters. Haskins Laboratory was founded in the 1930s by three initial members, Carl Haskins, Franklin Cooper, and Seymour Hunter. At this time, Haskins was affiliated with three prestigious universities, Harvard, MIT, and Union College. Its original location was in Schenectady in New York, but it moved to New York City in 1939. From its founding, Haskins Laboratory and its researchers were interested in spoken and written language. In the 1940s, as veterans returned injured from World War II, the scientists at Haskins wanted to develop a technology to assist them. During this period, Alvin Lieberman joined the team and together they spent much time attempting to develop a machine that read for the blind. Although initially unsuccessful, their failure pushed them to question why blending of phonemes was so challenging. The insights they learned from this project fostered a legacy of research related to the relationship between speech, language, and reading. In the 1950s, Franklin Cooper invented the pattern playback machine. This fancy contraption that Haskins developed used light to turn spectrogram into a, an acoustic signal. The pattern playback allowed Alvin Lieberman to learn that speech is not just an acoustic alphabet, not just individual sounds blended together. Rather, due to co-articulation of speech, there is an overlap of consonants and vowels, which is context dependent. Not one, it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between sounds and phonemes. These ideas would also be formative in Lieberman's motor speech theory that he developed about 10 years later. In the 1970s, Haskins moved to New Haven, Connecticut, where it is still located today. There, the lab fostered new academic relationships with Yale and the University of Connecticut. At this new location, Shankweiler and colleagues began investigating how the information they had about speech perception related to reading development. Together, this group coined the term phonemic awareness, an essential term used to describe early reading readiness. Phonemic awareness is the ability to manipulate units of sound. Together, this group also closed the loop begun almost 30 years prior when they created a reading machine for the blind. This is also the basis for text-to-speech readers we use today. To examine the publication record of Haskins between the 1950s and the 1970s, we conducted a cursory search of PsycInfo database using the terms Haskins Laboratory and other related terms such as Haskins Lab. The search resulted in the following. In the 1950s, about 17 articles were published by the group. Most of these articles were utilizing the technology that had been invented the decade prior, the pattern playback machine. In the 1960s, their endeavors continued where jointly they published about nine articles, including Alvin Lieberman's seminal paper, Perception of the Speech Code. In the 1970s, they published around 36 articles. At this time, there was evidence of building on previous speech science and perception research to better understand the neurological underpinnings and correlation to reading. Together, you can see across the decades that Haskins continued to build upon its prior knowledge to inform, better inform our understanding of speech, language, and ultimately reading. This progression of research continues today. Interestingly, in 1972, or around the time of the Watergate scandal, Franklin Cooper was invited to be on a panel of six experts to investigate the tape gap 
during a conversation between Nixon and Halderman. Because of his understanding of spectrograms and also speech perception, Franklin Cooper was exactly the man for this job. On a team with other researchers, they discovered that an erasure did occur using spectrogram technology and Cooper's knowledge of speech perception. And you can see here, these are the official documents uh, in which the team produced after their research, showing and highlighting uh, what had been done and their findings. You can also see here a picture of the spectrogram that showed the exact point and the evidence that they needed to determine that there was um, a gap in the tape that had been uh, mishandled by the administration. In the 1990s, Ken Pugh became one of the first scientists to use functional magnetic imaging, or fMRI, to investigate reading and reading disabilities. In the 90s as well, Philip Rubin and colleagues developed a model of the articulatory system that allows replication of MRI images of actual speakers. It's known as CASI, Configurable Articulatory Synthesizer. This is of particular interest to me as my name is Casey and also spelled C-A-S-Y. Both of these projects exemplify how previous research influenced the direction of the current research at Haskins. From its conception, Haskins has created and utilized technologies to help them better explore speech, language, and reading. Today you see evidence of the same dedication to technological innovations. Over the course of its history, Haskins has been a beacon for how to meld basic and applied research to the benefit of both academia and the community. From Haskins' beginning, beginnings, the researchers have been involved in both theoretical and technological advances to better understand speech, language, and reading. Today, Haskins focuses their research time and money on understanding and alleviating the national literacy crisis. I'd like to leave you with Haskins' current mission statement, which is a testament to the work done by their founder and early researchers. Haskins Laboratory is an independent, international, multidisciplinary community of researchers conducting basic research on spoken and written language, exchanging ideas, fostering collaborations, and foraging partnerships across the sciences. It produces groundbreaking research that enhances our understanding of and reveals ways to improve or remediate speech perception and production, reading and reading disabilities, and human communication.